Hello, I hope you're having a wonderful day today. I've made this video for you to explain the philosophy and techniques used in this month's yoga style. Welcome to Ashtanga Yoga. This style of yoga is based on the teachings of K. Patabi Joss. He is the teacher who coined the phrase, yoga is 99% practice and 1% theory, which also explains why I love this style of yoga so much. It is very physical and uses the breathing technique called ujjayi breathing, which you have been practicing for months now. When people ask what style of yoga Yoga Burn was based on, I say it's a combination of Ashtanga and Vinyasa. They are both vigorous flow styles of yoga that produce great change within the body and the mind. So let's dive into some important yoga philosophy that will help you on your mat. Starting off with what Ashtanga translated into English means, eight limb union. So for you to understand what that means, let's dive into the eight limbs of yoga. The eight limbs of yoga are nourished by a regular, consistent practice. When we have a regular practice, we become aware of what we put in our bodies and how we interact with the world around us. Yama is the first limb and it translates into ethical disciplines, or being non-harming in thought, word, and deed. So in essence, thinking, speaking, and doing positive or kind things when dealing with other people. There are specific principles within this limb, such as refraining from dishonesty and non-possessiveness. The next limb is more focused on how you interact with yourself. Niyama is the second limb and it means self-observation. There are a few principles including contentment or santosha, self-discipline and self-study within this limb, all of which can be done during your time on the mat. The next limb of Ashtanga Yoga will be the one you're most familiar with. It's asana, which means posture, and this makes up majority of our yoga practice in the West. Pranayama is the fourth limb. Pranayama means breath control, another area that we spend a lot of time on by learning the breath of fire, alternate nostril breathing, and the ujjayi breath as well. With the help of the breathing, we can cultivate the fifth limb, which is pratyahara. Pratyahara means sense withdrawal. So when we focus on being present and have a single-minded focus on our mat. Dharana is the next limb, which means concentration. Through our practice of sense withdrawal, we develop better concentration, not only on our mats, but also in other aspects of life as well. Next up, dhyana, which means meditation. We have some experience with this, but in my opinion, it takes hours and hours of practice over years to reach a true meditative state in which you can really experience the final limb. The eighth and final limb of Ashtanga Yoga is known as Samadhi, which means a state of joy and peace. This is thought to come after steady practice and focus on each of the eight limbs. So, Ashtanga is designed to help you refine and develop all of these important pieces so you can essentially reach extraordinary peace and happiness. Interesting, right? Now let's get into the layout of each class. Ideally, each practice within the Ashtanga primary series is meant to be done all in one sitting. However, that can take at the very least an hour and a half, which is not very practical. So I've broken down the series into half hour sequences that are very productive and will teach you how to do these interesting poses in a timely manner. Each practice begins with a few rounds of sun salutations before moving into the asanas, which are held for five breaths each. Now not only will you get a great yoga practice in a half hour, you will also enjoy a short savasana and meditation within each and every half hour class. At any time during your final relaxation, you can pause the video and relax on your own, as 10 minutes is the ideal amount of time for final relaxation. Within this month, it will be handy to have a strap and a set of yoga blocks nearby as these help to make the asanas more achievable. So I would suggest having those items on hand for each practice in case you decide to use them. The last thing I want to go over with you is in regards to the supported headstand. 
In this month's practice, there is an option for you to try a little supported headstand in just two of the classes. If this is new to you, I would suggest moving your mat against the wall as we did in month two of Yoga Burn Monthly. However, if you have some experiences with arm balances or supporting headstand, it may be a good time to move away from the wall. It's up to you. Keep in mind, even after 14 years of yoga practice, I'm still working up to a supported headstand. So be patient with yourself. It takes time. And if you choose to leave it out of your practice, then that is your choice and I completely support you either way. There's no pressure. Inversions and arm balances have never been my forte, but I do know that they are wonderful for strengthening the spine, neck and shoulders, as well as sending a healthy dose of fresh blood to the brain, which can aid in mental clarity. Not to mention, it is fun to do something new that is out of your comfort zone. So I'm wishing you a wonderful month of new challenges and poses that will help to not only transform your body, but your thoughts about your body as well. I promise you, you are stronger than you think, and you can do this. And if any questions come up, please send me an email and I'll be sure to get them answered for you. I'm wishing you a great month and I'm also hoping that you really enjoy these practices I have put together for you. See you on the mat. Namaste.